Now we're going to look at tuning all of the samples and EQing them a little bit further. So what do I mean by tuning? Well, let's go back to our sub kick, look at the frequency analyzer and see what's going on. You'll see that there is one very, very prominent frequency. And it tells us in this frequency analyzer that that is a G0. We can see it at the bottom left just here. If I hover over the center point, a G0. Well, G sharp zero to G0. Now, the kick is the most prominent sound in any electronic track, in most electronic tracks. But more so than that, it plays every single beat. Let's assume we're composing a track in the key of A minor using the scale of A natural minor. We went through this in our music theory part of the course, which you can find on our website online.soundflowmusicacademy.com. Um, and basically, a G sharp is not a note that is used within the A natural minor. In fact, let me go to our MIDI editor over here. And you'll see that G sharp is this note. And even if you don't know, A natural minor is made up of all of the white keys and none of the black keys. So if our kick was producing the frequency of G sharp, well, it means that every single time the kick is played, we have an out of tune note being produced in our track. That would happen throughout most of the track. And this would sound really, really bad in any speaker system that has a high enough bass response to produce these low frequencies. Imagine you're listening to your favorite band and the bass guitarist is playing the wrong note consistently on every single pluck. It would just make the it would make the whole track fall apart. The whole mix just sound really unconnected, disconnected, and terrible. So what we need to do is look at this frequency and perhaps transpose using the transpose knob over here up or down the pitch of the kick. Now this frequency analyzer is good in the sense that it tells you the closest note. So in this case, where I'm hovering over, it says it would be D sharp zero, but it doesn't tell you exactly how far away from those notes it is. So you can get other frequency analyzers which do this. One of my favorite ones is scope. So we're going to use scope in the frequency analysis mode. And I'm going to, as I've done, actually, I've soloed the sub kick. I'm going to press play. We're going to zoom in increase the FFT size, reduce the speed. And now we're going to hover over the center point and see exactly what note it is. So it's a G sharp minus 20 to 26 cents. This means that it's 26 cents below a perfect G sharp. Now 100 cents equals a semitone. In other words, 100 cents equals the distance from one key to another key. So going back to this, we're going to move the pitch of our kick to an F. See, an F is in the key of A minor, uh, but it's also in a low enough frequency to generate that deep rumble that you hear in most house tracks, in most techno tracks, and so on. So if we go back to our MIDI, a G sharp is here. We want to go one, two, three, down. So back to this, we're going to transpose our kick three semitones down. And I will say that our center point is closer to an F. Okay, now it's not a perfect F. And the only way to transpose in sense would be to go to controls 
and here we can see transpose we've done minus three semitones now we need to detune it we want to go up by about let's go 16 cents and see where the center point takes us it looks like the center point is just about a perfect f now give or take that's close enough for me to be happy now let's see how this combines with our second kick okay not too bad let's compare again the phase in and out so the fa the polarity inverted or not inverted I think it sounds a little bit better with the phase not inverted but we also need to potentially tune our second kick okay so there's one thing to note with this kick yes it has a fundamental frequency but it's a very very short one and it's not as low as our low frequency kick so instead of tuning it what we could do is we could actually simply shorten the sample so then it's not really sustaining at this pitch at all and therefore it doesn't need tuning but if you really want to be pedantic about this go into your fft and do indeed tune it so it would be there it's currently hovering over a b1 minus 44 cents let's see so b works I would probably move this either to an A or to a perfect B or to a C. Remember, we're working in the A natural minor. Okay, so let's go up by a few cents. That seems about right. Let's listen to it with our sub kick combined. Sounds good to me. What if we transpose it down to an A, so two semitones down? I prefer the B. I think it molds with the sub kick, which is play producing the note F better okay very good now the clicky kick doesn't really need tuning because it's mostly just noise and it's extremely short so no one is going to perceive it as an actual pitch so this finally all we're going to do is just check the phase the polarity inverted or back to normal to see if the phase changed a little bit the phase correlation between the three uh, while we were tuning the samples No, nope, that sounds good to me. And keep in mind, throughout this video series on the kick drum, you'll notice on pretty much every video, everything that, on every step that I take, I'm checking the polarity inversion every time to see in case the phase moved a little bit and we need to invert the polarity again or take away the inversion. Okay, finally, we're now going to go into processing of the kick drum. So that would be EQing, compression, and adding a few other effects that can just make the kicks work better together.